Hello and welcome to this lesson on G by freefall, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to calculate the acceleration due to gravity for an object which is in freefall. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand what freefall motion is, understand the factors that affect freefall motion, and then finally derive the value of G for investigative results. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the following parts of the AQA A-level physics specification, predominantly the required practical three, determination of G by freefall. So in the previous lesson, we looked at the equations of motion, V equals U plus AT, S equals UT plus a half AT squared, S equals a half U plus V times by T, and V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now we can use these equations of motion to describe the motion of objects in the real world, which includes an object freefalling. Now freefall is when an object accelerates to towards the ground due to the resultant force of gravity. So for an object in freefall, there is a gravity acting on the object and nothing else. So we can say the object is undergoing an acceleration of G. Now remember, acceleration is a vector quantity and G acts towards the center of the mass of the Earth, which from the perspective of someone on the Earth is always downwards. Now the magnitude of G is 9.81 meters per second squared, but this does vary slightly over the surface of the Earth. So the value of G can vary depending on factors including things like altitude, latitude and the geology of the area. So for example, G is 9.25 meters per second squared in Helsinki, 9.816 meters per second squared in London, and 9.776 meters per second squared in Singapore. Now, it's important to note that for any object during freefall, the only force acting on the object is the weight. Now, objects can have an initial velocity in any direction and still undergo freefall as long as the force that's provided the initial velocity is no longer acting upon, upon the object. So all objects in freefall accelerate to the ground at the same rate, and the scientist who investigated objects falling freely was Galileo. Now, interestingly, Galileo set up systematic and rigorous experiments to test his theories, and these experiments could be repeated, and the results could be described mathematically and compared between different scientists. So Galileo, in his investigations, believed that all objects fall at the same rate, but it was difficult to prove, as the free-fallen objects fell too quickly for Galileo to take accurate measurements because he only had a water clock and the air resistance as well affected the rate at which the objects fall. So Galileo measured the time a ball took to roll down a smooth groove in an inclined plane. Now rolling the ball down a plane slowed the ball's fall as well as reducing the effect of air resistance. So the ball accelerated down the slope and by rolling the ball along different fractions of the total length of the slope, Galileo found that the distance the ball travelled was proportional to the time taken squared. So ultimately Galileo realised that the ball was accelerating at a constant rate. Isaac Newton then used this to work out that this was because all objects were attracted by the same force to the earth, gravity. So as we mentioned previously, when an object is in free fall, there's only one force acting on it, weight. So we can say the resultant force on the object is equal to the weight. Now we know the equation for weight is mg, mass times by gravitational field strength, and we know that according to Newton's second law of motion, the resultant force is equal to mass times by velocity, f equals ma. So we can now equate the idea that resultant force equals weight to ma equals mg. Now you'll notice that m is a common term on both sides of the equation, so m will cancel through to give us the idea that a equals g. So from this, we know the acceleration of the object does not depend on its mass, but the acceleration of the object will only depend upon the strength of gravity, g. And at the surface of the Earth, we say that this doesn't vary for objects, so the acceleration of all objects towards the centre of the Earth is the same. Now, this idea does not consider the effect of air resistance, but we can adapt the equations of motion for objects under freefall. So for objects under freefall, we can say that the acceleration is g, 
and is acting downwards, so it's usually negative. So A equals minus G. We say that T, the time, will always be positive. U and V could either be positive or negative, depending on the situation. And S, the displacement, can be positive or negative, depending on the situation. So we can say that if an object has fallen from rest, u will equal 0 and a will equal g which is minus 9.81 so our equations of motion will now be adapted to be the following v equals gt v squared equals 2gs s equals a half gt squared and s equals vt over 2 now if an object's moving upwards we can say a equals g which equals minus 9.81 so meters per second squared so now we can say v equals u plus gt s equals ut plus a half gt squared v squared equals u squared plus 2gs and s equals u plus v over 2 times by t so let's now have a look at an example question regarding an object undergoing freefall. So we can say a ball drops 85.6 centimetres from an electromagnet to a trapdoor in 0.42 seconds. So calculate a value for G. So what you would do is you'd write out S, U, V, A, N, T, SUVAT, and you pop in the numbers. So S equals 0.856 metres, U equals 0, A equals G, but we don't know the value of G, and T equals 0.421 seconds. Note we've converted centimetres into metres. So we look for our correct equation uh, for SUVAT, and again the equation for freefall. So then it's S equals a half AT squared. So A is going to be equal to 2S over T squared. Pop in all the numbers and we get 9.66 meters per second squared now please be aware that this value will not be accurate compared to the real world because there will be the presence of air resistance as the object falls and also a likely delay in the time of the object falling from after it's been released now interestingly if you drop a ball or a stone it will fall to the ground and the picture below is based on the idea of multi-flash photography shows that the ball at equal intervals of time and you can see that the ball's velocity increases as it falls because the spaces between the images of the ball increase steadily indicating to us the ball is accelerating. So a multi-flash photography is useful to demonstrate that the ball accelerates as it falls. So usually objects fall too quickly for our eyes to be able to observe them speeding up. Now, if we measure the acceleration of a free-falling object on the surface of the Earth, we find that the value is about 9.81 meters per second squared, which is the known value of acceleration of free-fall, which is given the symbol g, the acceleration due to gravity. Now, we can actually link this into previous equations, because what we can say is that if we drop an object, its initial velocity, which is, and we say, equals u equals zero, well, how far will it fall in time t? Well, we can substitute in the equation s equals ut plus a half at squared, and we can therefore say s equals a half times by 9.81 times by t squared, or 4.9 times by t squared. So, this provides an important idea which we can then use in practicals to work out values of g. Because we know our equation is s equals a half gt squared, this tells us if we measure s, the displacement, how far it has fallen, and we measure time squared, t squared, so the time it takes to fall squared, we can then use this to determine a value of g. So we'll look in our next lesson about how, what the practical endorsement is, where you must measure the value of t squared and change the value of displacement and use these ideas to work out g by freefall. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand what free fall motion is, understand the factors that affect free fall motion, and finally derive the value of G from investigative results. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on G by free fall, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.